Welcome to the Peace Haven Weekly Podcast. Weekly message audio from Peace Haven Baptist Church in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. We continue our study in Romans, with this sermon entitled, Do Not Pass Judgment. We thank you for listening and be sure to visit us at www.findpeace.today. Good morning. God is good. And uh, so thankful for that hope and assurance that we have in uh, our Savior. As we uh, continue our study in Romans this morning, um, we will, uh, at the end of our worship time together this morning, we will uh, take of the Lord's table and uh, we'll, we'll stand and reaffirm our, our covenant to, uh, to one another uh, as a body of believers and uh, it's a, a special time, and, and really, uh, kind of where we're at this morning is is providential to uh, to that covenant and um, our responsibility and our relationship to each other. Um, as we continue in Romans 14, um, if I ask you this morning. Um, what one of the most well-known or most quoted um, verses in Scripture was. Um, we once would say John 3.16. Um, I was, as I was studying this week, I was reminded, um, and I say was, um, because I was reminded that uh, in, I have to look at this, 2012 it was that uh, when Tim Tebow did he play for the Broncos or the Steelers? I didn't even look that up. But, but the Broncos. Um, oh, so so they won, and yeah, it was bad for. Sorry, not, sorry to bring that baggage back up. Sorry. Yeah, uh, but when he played in that game, um, ninety million people. Google John three sixteen. And that's a, an amazing thing, but guys, that's also a heartbreaking thing. That 90 million people didn't know John 3.16. Um, and so that's why I say it, it was one of the most well-known verses of, of Scripture. Um, today, probably the most quoted is uh, Matthew 7.1. Judge not, lest ye be judged except we hear the Reader's Digest condensed version, uh, don't judge me. Uh, that's what we, we hear. We've kind of dumbed it down. Society has dumbed it down to that. And uh, people take that verse out of context um, and, and say, well, no one can, can judge my actions. Uh, and that isn't what Jesus was teaching there. Um, that passage is about hypocrisy, about um, not judging someone with a different standard than what you judge yourself, a different standard than what governs your, your own affairs in your own life. Um, we, we make judgments on a daily basis. Um, we judge what we will have for, for breakfast in the morning. Um, Amanda this morning judged what flavors she wanted to put in her coffee, um, what to wear, what time to, to wake up. Uh, we make judgments on what is, is right and wrong. Um, we, we make morality judgments. Uh, and, and what Jesus was teaching in Matthew, his point is that our standard should, should always be the same. Uh, and that standard should be God's standard. It should be the standard of, of His Word. And so we know that lying and stealing is, is wrong. That's not a matter of preference. It's not a matter of opinion. Uh, Jesus was not saying don't make those kind of judgments, uh, but he was saying that we should be sure to judge ourselves by the same standards. Uh, furthermore, later in that passage, uh, he commands us to be making judgments because we are to watch out for um, false prophets, and, and that requires making a judgment, weighing someone against God's standard. Uh, what is this person Teaching is this? Uh, are they teaching a, a lie, or is this a, a truth from God's word? And so again, our, our standard is is God's word. 
Uh, when what someone says or does is, is not in line with His Word, we're, we're not wrong for pointing that out. Um, we're not wrong for challenging someone's uh, beliefs or actions when they are not in accordance to God's Word. We, we can do that, uh, and we, we should do that, but we should do that in, in gentle, gentleness and love and in a uh, respectful way. Um, but what about when it comes to things that the Bible is not uh, explicit about? Things that the Bible doesn't explicitly say. Um, when the, the, the Bible does speak, we submit to God's authority. Um, but the Bible is not exhaustive. It, it's not an encyclopedia of ethics or, or morals. Um, so we, we can think of examples. Uh, the Bible doesn't say, uh, don't eat meat, you need to be a vegetarian. Um, amen. Yeah, amen. Uh, it, the Bible does prohibit drunkenness. We talked about that last week, but it, it doesn't say never drink alcohol, period. Um, what about uh, in matters of, of education? Um, there's, there's not a passage in the Bible that says, parents, thou shalt homeschool your children. That, that's not in there. Um, we do know that we should dress modestly uh, as believers, but, but what does that look like? There's not... Um, the Bible doesn't come with like a measuring tape of, you know, this should be this size and should be this length and, and those kind of things. Um, what about bringing coffee into the church, uh, tattoos, length of hair, uh, the music that we listen to, the, the movies that we watch? There's a, there's a lot of questions, a lot of kind of gray areas that the Bible doesn't explicitly command something or, or prohibit something. Um, all of those are what we would call matters of, of conscience. Um, if you want the big fancy word, um, those are matters of a diaphora. Uh, that is uh, the Greek word for indifference. And so this morning Paul is going to uh, continue. Uh, when, he, when he gets to chapter 12, really, he, he's talking about our, our freedom, the freedom that we have in, in Christ. And so this morning Paul is going to, to continue to talk about that and uh, we're going to see that, that Christianity is not a cookie-cutter religion. Uh, we don't all talk the same, dress the same, look alike. Um, it's not like a, a neat package box, and, and there are, are things that you, you know, uh, certain ways that you dress or speak. Uh, there is, is unity in diversity. And so we are united in Christ, and that's what we will we'll celebrate as we come to the Lord's table. We submit to Him. We follow Him as our, our Savior and King. Uh, but we also have freedom of conscience uh, when it comes to tertiary issues. So this morning we'll, we'll pick up in Romans 14, and, and we'll kind of be in this section for, for two weeks um, but it says, as for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let the one who eats, let not the one who eats, sorry, despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. That's a, a, a big, put a pin in that. The one who observes the day, observe it, observes it in honor of the Lord, the one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord of both the, living and the, the, both the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us 
will give an account of himself to God. And so the, the first thing that we need to notice that needs to be pointed out is that these are not, Paul is not speaking about issues per, pertaining to uh, salvation. Um, no one here is denying the, the person and work of, of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, and we know that because in verse 3, Paul says, Welcome him because God has welcomed him. Um, and so if this was an issue surrounding salvation, if it was something um, that your salvation was dependent upon, um, Paul would, would call them out. Uh, and we can see evidence of that in Colossians and, and Galatians. Uh, in Galatians, Paul addresses the, the Judaizers. And, and so these were people that said, well, salvation is, is Jesus plus something. Uh, in their mind, it was salvation is Jesus plus circumcision or, or Jesus plus keeping Shabbat or the Sabbath. Uh, and Paul, he, he calls them out and says, uh, listen, those of you that have been listening to these people, I, I'm astonished how quickly you have turned to another gospel, a different gospel, how you have allowed the, the gospel to be distorted by these people. And, and then to those people that were guilty of saying it's Jesus plus circumcision, he uses some really strong words. If you haven't read it, go back and read it. He says, I, I wish they would emasculate themselves. If, if this is what you believe, just emasculate yourselves. Then you'll be really, really holy. And, and so Paul has some really strong words for those people that distort and twist the gospel. Uh, and so th this was an early form of legalism, uh, that you must do this. You must keep the law. You must be circumcised. You must keep the Sabbath uh, to be a Christian. And so Paul speaks out against that legalism in, in Galatians and Colossians uh, and says and, and reminds us that we are saved by Christ's work through faith, not by works, not by keeping the law. Uh, Paul is calling here uh, for patience regarding secondary issues. And so these are things that uh, are not explicitly declared in Scripture as, as being right or wrong. Um, these are not closed-handed issues. Uh, again, the, the virgin birth, uh, the death and burial and resurrection of Christ, that, that we are sinners in need of a Savior, that His blood is sufficient to forgive and cleanse us of our sin. Uh, he, he's not talking about things either that Scripture clearly prohibits. Um, he's saying don't quarrel over opinions. And so quarrel here in the ESV, it shares the same Greek root uh, as later he'll say past judgment. Uh, and that word is, is krino. Uh, and so for the kids today, our, our kind of phrase or thing to think about uh, is there is a difference in making a judgment and passing judgment. And so again, we, we make judgment calls. We make decisions every day. Uh, what to eat for breakfast, the clothes that we wear to school. Um, this person... Is lying, lying is wrong, that, that person has sinned, uh, those are, are making judgments. Um, but passing judge, judgment is a bit different. Um, it, it moves to trying to discern someone's motive or intent, why they did something. And so really simply, um, it, it might be, well, why, did they, uh, why didn't they sit with me at lunch today? Uh, it must be that they don't like me, that they hate me, and so they didn't sit with me. Uh, now you're, you're trying to examine their heart, their motives, things that you can't see. Um, in reality, m maybe they were sick and went home. Maybe they weren't even at school that day to, to eat lunch with you. Or maybe they sat at a table with a, a different friend because that friend was having a really hard day. And they knew that that, that friend needed some support. And so they sat with them um, that day. Or, or, or adults, we do this. Why haven't they texted me lately? Why haven't they called? Why haven't they sent me a message? Well, it must be because they hate me or they're mad at me. Uh, again, that, that's passing judgment. It's judging their motive and intent. Uh, maybe they've had a really hectic day, a, a busy week. Um, maybe they're sick. Maybe they're, maybe they're wondering the same thing about you. Uh, why haven't they texted me? Um, maybe they drop their phone in the toilet and they can't text. I, I, I mean, those things kind of happen. 
Um, but passing judgment isn't healthy and it's not beneficial uh, because we don't know. We don't know the hearts and motives of others. Only God can search and know someone's heart. First Samuel sixteen seven says the Lord is the one who can look on the heart. Um, and just as a bonus, um, when we do that, guys, it shows that we're sinful. Um, because what we're really saying is, they did that to hurt me. Because when I want to hurt people, that's what I do. That, that, that's what we're saying. Um, we give ourselves, when something happens and, and we let someone else down, uh, we give ourselves the benefit of the doubt, but we're not too quick to do that to others. Um, and so these were believers who were quarreling, uh, passing judgment over uh, opinions. Uh, not only were they saying, you're, you're wrong in matters of conscience, they were saying, uh, we know why you're doing this wrong thing. We can judge your, your motives and your intent. Uh, and so Paul is speaking to two types of believers here, uh, the weak and the strong in faith. And so um, one of the questions that we have to ask is, what does he mean by weak in the faith? Uh, who are those people that are, are weak uh, in faith? And so there are a few possibilities. Uh, it may be that he is speaking to uh, weak Gentile Christians who are refusing to eat meat. He talks about uh, some of you are eating meat and some of you are, are vegetarian. Um, and, and it kind of parallels the, the reason we could say he, he might be talking about that. Um, is because this parallels what Paul um, speaks about in Corinthians. And if you remember way back when we kind of introduced Romans, um, Paul is writing from, from Corinth. And so um, this kind of may have been resonating in his mind. And, and what was happening in Corinth is um, there were some Gentiles that had believed in Jesus, had converted to Christianity, were followers of Jesus, and they had come from pagan backgrounds where they were uh, would sacrifice meat to idols. And so um, when it came to going to, to buy your meat or going to someone's house, um, they would refuse to eat meat that had been sacrificed to idols because in, in their mind that was really close to home. And by eating that meat that had been sacrificed to an idol, uh, in their mind they, they were saying, well, if, if I eat this, then I'm... Uh, condoning idol worship or I'm participating in the worship of, of those idols. It's like I'm participating in that thing that I've really turned my back towards to, to follow Jesus. And so it's possible um, that Paul is, is kind of making a connection here with that. Um, but idol worship is not mentioned here. Um, another one that we've already ruled out is that it may be that Paul is speaking the, to those who are uh, legalist. If you do this or if you don't do this, uh, you're not really saved. Uh, and if that were the case, uh, then Paul probably would have used those, those harsher words. Um, here the current concern is not about salvation, but about honoring God. Um, how to honor God with your life. And so this is dealing with uh, matters of, of moral and spiritual permissiveness. Uh, a third option might be that these were... Um, the people that were weak in faith were Messianic Jews um, who were holding to their Jewish traditions and, and customs. Um, these are, are Jewish people that would have still observed uh, the dietary laws, observed the Sabbath, um, those kind of things. But there's again, there's a, a problem with th that. Um, actually, two problems. Uh, first, there's, there's not a Jewish requirement to be a vegetarian. Um, nowhere in Jewish code does it require them to be vegetarian uh, and the second was that that drinking he's talking about drinking uh, and that's not prohibited in in jewish law except for those who were um, taking the the vow of a nazarite and so we can say that's that's probably not the case either uh, the fourth is the most likely that these are believers both jewish and gentile believers who were still young in their faith um, kind of immature in their faith uh, and they haven't given up various ascetic uh, practices or observances. And so their beliefs may have been influenced by uh, social pressure or maybe just superstition. 
Um, but at the end of the day, they, they aren't fully convinced that something is permitted. And uh, I thought about an example that we can kind of see from, from Scripture. Um, and I didn't highlight this on here. I hope I put the slide in there. Yeah, I did. Um, in Galatians, um, Paul actually rebukes the Apostle Peter for something. Uh, it says, But when Cephas, Peter, came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and, and, do, and not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? And so in that example here, uh, Peter would, would be the one who would have been weak in the faith. Um, he was caving in to social pressure from the, the circumcision party. Um, he wasn't fully convinced in his own mind because if he had been, uh, he would have kept eating with the Gentiles and said, see, we're, we're part of the same family. But since those, that pressure was kind of applied and he wasn't convinced in his own mind, he, he caved uh, to that social pressure. And so that's an example that we can kind of see in Scripture. Um, Paul is not, we need to understand here, um, and hear me say this, Paul is not using weak in faith as an insult. He's not. Uh, this is not that they have rejected some fundamental teaching about Jesus. Um, what's happening is these people haven't fully realized the implications of their faith. They haven't fully realized their freedom in Christ. And so there were questions uh, about, well, what can we eat? What can we drink? There were questions uh, and confusion surrounding the nature of certain days of the week. And so these people were weak. Because they feared that eating or drinking uh, certain things would lead them to um, kind of a spiritual impurity. They thought that not observing a day as special meant that they weren't devoted to God. Uh, they thought that abstaining from certain things would be beneficial uh, morally and spiritually. And so again, notice this is not about salvation, um, but it is about how can we live in a way that, that honors God? And so the, the other question that we have to ask is, what does it mean to be strong in faith? So we've looked at the weak in faith, and now what does it mean to be strong in faith? Uh, that is the other end of the, the spectrum here. First, I'll, I'll say what it doesn't mean. Um, it doesn't mean you can live carefree and do whatever you want. Uh, the strong in faith will still want to follow Christ and honor God as obedient servants. Um, but it is someone who better understands something. Uh, better understands something like this. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And again, this is Paul writing in 1 Corinthians. Uh, and so the strong are, are also uh, not sinful in their actions and, and belief. Um, they understand, their understanding of grace lets them enjoy their freedom in Christ. And they do so in a way that doesn't violate God's word or their own conscience. And so first they are uh, obedient to God's word. If God's word says it, if it prohibits or commands it, then I'm going to be obedient to God's word. And then secondly, in, in matters of conscience, um, they're, they're fully convinced about their belief and about their action. And so um, that involves some homework, right? Um, we don't want to be making impulse decisions um, as things arise. And so uh, that will involve thinking about your convictions. It, it will involve reading God's Word. Does God say anything about this? What does He say? What doesn't He say? Uh, so it will involve reading and studying of, of God's Word. Uh, it will involve being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, uh, listening to the Spirit as they lead us. Um, it will involve prayer and consideration. Again, this, this, this shouldn't be uh, impulse decisions. Uh, these should be things we've thought through. Uh, 
Uh, we should know our convictions before we act on our convictions. Uh, amen. Uh, we don't want to kind of do this willy-nilly. And so there, there needs to be some, some study and, and thought uh, given to uh, those matters of, of conscience. Um, so how should these two groups interact with one another? Uh, first, Paul says, keep the main thing the main thing. Uh, keep the gospel primary. Uh, uphold the gospel. Don't argue and fight over matters of conscience. Um, sure, you can, can disagree. Uh, you can even discuss these things. Uh, you can search the scriptures together and have conversations a- about these issues. Uh, but don't argue and, and divide over secondary issues. Don't elevate those to the same level as the gospel. Um, instead, as Paul has already said that w- we've been reading the past few weeks, uh, outdo one another in, in showing honor, love one another, uh, show each other respect. The second thing he says is, is don't pass judgment on your, your brother or sister. Uh, the strong shouldn't despise the weak. Uh, they shouldn't scorn or, or reject them. Um, so, that, so they don't say, uh, they don't have faith, they're just a legalist. We, we don't put that label on someone. Uh, if they're not talking about this being a, a salvation issue, um, again, this is not about salvation. The, these people are trying to honor God with the decisions that they make. Uh, they're sincere and, and genuine in, in what they're trying to live out. Uh, the weak should also not pass judgment on the strong. Um, and, and so this goes like, I saw them have a beer at supper at a restaurant. I bet they're a drunk when they're at home. No, we can't say that. Um, or... This is one, uh, will you pray for them because I saw them associating with these people or they went to that movie or that concert. Um, That's not how we should live our lives um, with each other. Uh, And we must not forget why we don't make judgments like that. We don't pass judgment on someone like that because we can't see the intentions of their heart. Only God can see that. Uh, and, And Paul really as a way of saying, you know, some of these things that we take the, I'm going to use your words, for, I'm going to take the filter off here for a second. Um, some of these things that we argue over uh, and bring up, Paul would say, guys, that's none of your business. It's not. One day you will stand accountable before God and one day they will stand accountable before God and this, these are things that are between them and the God that they serve. Um, At the end of the day, both the weak and the strong, every believer should be convinced in their own mind. Uh, When the Bible doesn't explicitly command or prohibit something, be convinced in their own mind. Uh, And there's two ways we can do that. There's two questions that we really should ask ourselves. Um, Is this something that will honor the God that I serve? Um, Or is this something that will will bring dishonor to Him if I am involved in it? Uh, And then the second is, will this activity hinder my walk with my Savior? Uh, Will this hinder my relationship with my Creator? Um, And and so those are questions that we we should evaluate and and ask ourselves um, in our walk with, with God um, and, and sometimes this isn't easy um, as we think about being in covenant with one another as a, a family of, of believers um, because we're not perfect. Um, and and we, we want to judge. That, that's in our nature. That's in that flesh. We, we want to hold people to a, uh, our standard instead of God's standard. Um, we often want to be God's hall monitors. Um, and and we have to fight that. Uh, God wants us to have patience with one another, show honor to one another, give each other the benefit of the doubt. Um, it, it, again, it's okay to talk about those preferences and those opinions. It's okay to seek counsel and advice. Um, you know, especially 
younger believers speaking to older, more mature believers. What's, what's your opinion on this? How, what do you think the Bible says about this? Am I making the right decision? Is this wrong, right? We can, we can have those conversations, and we should. That, that's, that's how we grow together. Um, but we must guard against those secondary issues becoming divisive. Um, sometimes we, we just have to d- agree to disagree. Um, and, and here's the key. Uh, sometimes we just have to trust that the Holy Spirit is fully capable of doing His job. We have to trust that, guys. Um, and, and so if, if we aren't sure about something, but we, we see an activity or something in someone's life, and we think, yeah, that, that's kind of questionable. Um, we have to trust that if, if it is wrong, that the Holy Spirit is leading that believer just like the Holy Spirit is, is leading me. And it may take time, but, but God will show, slowly realign us to Him. That, that's, his, that's His purpose. That's His goal. Um, and so we have to trust that the Holy Spirit can do His job. Um, I'm going to pray, and uh, I'm going to ask the, the elders to come up, and uh, we'll have you guys come and get communion and we'll partake in communion, and then we are going to uh, stand and, and reaffirm our covenant. And, and let me speak to you a, a little bit about that really quickly. Um, there, we did have some, some new folks join our, our church family, and we're, we're grateful for that. Uh, I didn't have anybody say, hey, I need to talk about baptism or, or be baptized. But um, please know that that is um, always something that we... Um, would like to hear about if there comes a time where you have given your life to Jesus and or you haven't been baptized, um, feel free to come talk to us about that. Or if uh, maybe you weren't ready to join uh, as a covenant member yet, um, when you're ready, if, if there comes a time where you're like, okay, this is the people that I want to be a part of and, and, and make a covenant with, um, we, we would always like to hear from you and, and we can work that out. Um, but what we'll do after we, we do communion is we'll have everyone stand. Uh, and the reason we do this is we, we don't want to say stand if you did this and then have people sitting down and kind of, you know, point that out. Um, so we'll just have everyone stand because these are things that we should, as, as believers, commit to anyway. Um, and so we, we don't want to single anyone out. So we'll ask everyone to, to participate, uh, even if you hadn't filled out the, the covenant form. Um, and so... That's how that will go. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and uh, for the freedom that we have in Jesus. And uh, God, we, we just ask that you would help us as, as imperfect people continue to work together, uh, do life together, um, because sometimes that's hard. And uh, we just always pray that you would uh, be lifted up by what we say, what we do, how we interact with each other. Um, God, forgive us when we sin against each other and convict us of our sins against one another. Um, Help us to strive for unity and for just a a further awe of of who you are and what Jesus has accomplished for us, what we have in Christ. And uh, we just thank you for all that you do. Uh, We ask uh, again this morning that you would be with our mission partners, continue to give them endurance and perseverance as they share the gospel with unreached people um, in different cultures and different languages. Uh, God, that you would just have your hand on their ministry, um, that you would encourage their families, that you would be with their health and and their finances. And uh, God, we're we're so grateful uh, to be able to participate through giving and through lifting them up uh, and through even being able to contact them and give them words of encouragement. and hearing their reports, and we're so grateful uh, for what you're doing overseas and in those unreached areas. Uh, God, we thank you for our church family that we are, uh, uh, as we reaffirm our our covenant to you and to one another as believers, um, just continue to lead us by your Spirit. And I thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.